Gaia. This is a personified name of Earth in Greek mythology. She is the ancestor of all life on Earth and the mother of all the goddess. During the early period, people have thought of a lot of things about the Earth and what lies beyond its boundaries. Famous philosophers like Aristotle, Salome, and Galileo frequently ask themselves questions about the Earth and the universe. While their ideas are considered to be true, most of them were replaced with the new theories and laws that were developed after the advent of the telescope. In this lecture, we will discuss the common questions about Earth and the solar system, starting from the shape of the Earth up to the models of the universe, and how we came to realize that the Earth is not the center of the solar system. In our previous discussion, we refer matter as to any substance that has a specific mass and consumes space by having its own volume. We also had discussed motion as a change in position of this matter over a certain period of time. In your last lecture about loss of motion, we realized that matter cannot be changed without force acting on it, right? These two things, matter and motion, were initially studied and apprehended by early Greek philosophers to explain the astronomical phenomena they observed in the past. First in our list is Empedocles, a Greek philosopher. He used to live in Sicily from 492 BCE to 432 BCE. He introduced the first theory on how we can describe things around us. Although humans during this time can easily distinguish materials based on its appearance or texture, there was no way they could identify what constitutes them. Empedocles argued that all things are made up of four elements, the fire, air, water, and earth. As an example, he explained that a stone contains a high amount of earth element and the rabbit has a high ratio of both water and fire elements, which allow the creation of soft fire and life. His theory became so popular during this time. Then came Democritus, who is also Greek, who proposed new explanation on matter. Unlike Empedocles, Democritus became stricter in explaining his ideas using science. According to him, if you continuously cut a stone into smaller pieces, there would be a point where it could no longer be divided. He called these small pieces of matter atomos, which means indivisible. He further proposed that atomos are specific to the material they constitute. Example, atomos of particular stone is unique to and different from other particles, say a fire of a lion. Perhaps what can we get about his findings is the idea that matter is composed of smaller and same particles. While Democritus' idea sounded fine, it was rejected by Aristotle and Plato, who during that time was known as great Greek philosophers. Instead, they supported the idea of Empedocles and added that the four elements, the fire, earth, water, and air, can be transformed from one form to another. Because of this, it took 2,000 years before Democritus' idea was rediscovered by a British scientist John Dalton, who is responsible for developing the first version of atomic theory. Through his observations about the daily weather in his place in England, he realized that water can transform into gas that goes with the air or solids in the form of ice. This led him to the conclusion that matter must be composed of tiny particles that became the foundation of chemistry as we know it now today. Aside from matter, another phenomenon that interests the early Greek was motion. During this time, the basic idea of motion was all living organisms move freely and non-living things like stones do not. One of the theories about motion during Greek era was introduced by Aristotle. He believed that there are two forms of motion, namely natural and violent motion. By natural motion, he means that object moves upward and downward due to the weight of the matter. Remember that he believed that matter is composed of different ratios of four elements? So, 
He thought that heavier things fell faster than lighter things. He didn't test this theory though because he thought it was so obvious. He also added that objects in natural motion cannot go in a circular manner. Violent motion, on the other hand, is a product of pushing or pulling caused by humans. Aristotle argued that it can voluntary or involuntary and this type of motion was caused by something. For example, throwing a ball can be considered violent motion because the ball would not move unless it was thrown, right? He further explained that without the presence of force, objects would immediately go to rest. He also was the first to introduce that earth is not moving since it is in proper place and there is no force acting on it. The idea of Aristotle about motion was accepted by so many people in early times until Galileo challenged it. Galileo was the first person to lay down the laws of motion for objects with masses. According to him, all bodies move and accelerate regardless of its size and mass. And he observed the motion of falling objects like feather and cannonball. These observations, Galileo's observations, help us now to understand the first concept of velocity using inclined planes, second, the development of the idea that force causes motion, and third, being at rest is the natural state of an object, and lastly, that inertia resists change in motion. From the work of Galileo, Newton formulated his own work and defined the relationship between motion and energy. All of these are discussed already in the previous lecture, but to give you a refresher, Newton was able to develop the following concepts. First one, the principle of acceleration is a change in velocity that was introduced by force. Second, inertia is the resistance in change of velocity that is proportional to its mass and the concept of momentum, which is the quantified motion energy. All of these, as we know it, were included in his three laws of motion, which we had studied already. Click the links in the description if you wanted to review these. Aside from the motions, Aristotle observed and introduced ancient Greek astronomers were also interested about non-terrestrial motions, or the observable motion of objects in the sky. Here, we have three types of motion under this category, diurnal, annual, and precession motions. Let us have a quick look about these motions. Diurnal motion refers to the apparent movement of stars and other celestial bodies around Earth. As a child, you think you were followed by the moon, right? Or as you stare in the moon and stars in the sky, they seem to move. It is caused by Earth's rotation from west to east, while the apparent movement of moons and stars and other celestial bodies viewed from Earth is from east to west. Say, if the Earth is not spinning, the stars will not appear to move westward, and no diurnal motion will be observed. Annual motion, on the other hand, from its name, annual, which means yearly, is the apparent yearly movement of the Sun across a background of stars. This movement is caused by the revolution of Earth around the Sun. You perhaps are familiar with your zodiac sign, right? Throughout the year, you will see 12 ancient constellations, depending on the apparent movement of the Sun across them. Lastly, we have precession, which refers to the conical motion of Earth's axis as it spins. Because of this motion, Earth's axis shifts very slowly, where it can only complete one cycle for every 26,000 years. Just imagine that. This motion is caused by the gravity that continuously changes the orientation of our planet's axis. Now, our planet is tilted at 23.5 degrees, and it will continually change at very slow pace as it rotates. Again, to sum up this video, we discuss about Greeks' early beliefs on matter and motion. While Empedicles' idea were supported by Plato and Aristotle, we have proven now that matter cannot come from these four elements. And even if we combine so many of them together in different ratios, fire, earth, water, and air will not give us a stone or a rabbit, okay? 
we learned as well that Democritus was the first person to explain composition of matter, and thank to him, 2,000 years later, John Dalton devised the first atomic theory which became one of the pillars in studying science today. We also explain how early Greeks explained motions, which eventually resulted in the formulation of three laws of motion by Newton. All video links are in the description if you wanted to have a review. Lastly, we explain some observable non-terrestrial motions, such as diurnal, annual, and precession. Later, from your window, try to look at the sky and see if stars and moons are really moving. That is all for this video. I am Gilmar De Castro. And hope to see you in the next video.